Hey guys, welcome to a new video. So in this video here, we're going to see how we can do custom update detection with the AS1 framework. So in one of the previous videos, we went over how we can set up the AS1 framework and also how we can run like the demo file that they have. So in this video here, I'm going to show you how we can implement it and set it up ourselves in a custom Python script from scratch. We're also going to create some other videos where we're going to apply optic trackers on top of it. We're going to do post estimation and also OCR with this framework. So it's actually like a really nice framework and they have a lot of the YOLO models implemented and also the optic trackers that we can apply on top of our optic detection model. So let's just jump into it. We have opened up Visual Studio Code. I'm going to show you how we can create a Python script from scratch. So we're just going to do that. Let's just call it um, AS1 Live Webcam. And then we're just going to call it Py. Then we're going to open up this custom uh, Python script. So first of all, we're going to import AS1 um, library. Let's just zoom in a bit so you guys can see what's going on. So we have import here. And then we're basically just going to import AS1. And then after we've done that, then from AS1 here, we're going to import the utilities. And then when we import the utilities, we're also going to import um, the actual like OAS1 model. Here we can set up the different kind of parameters for what type of optic detection and also what type of optic tracker we want to use. So again, we are going to use these optic detection models. We're also going to apply trackers on top of it in another video. Here, I'm just going to show you how we can run live inference with optic detection on our webcam. And then we're going to apply all these other different kind of things on top of it in the next videos. So definitely make sure to hit the subscribe button under the video here. So again, we're going to have object detection. We're going to detect objects in each individual frame that we read in from our webcam. Then if we want to track those objects over time, we actually like need to apply an object tracker on top of our object detection models and the outputs of that. So again, if you're losing detections from frame to frame with our object detector, then we're still able to keep track of them over time and over the number of frames if we're using these optic trackers together with our optic detection models. Again, they will slow down your application a bit, so it really depends on your application and project and also how fast you need it to run. So if you want to run in real time, you will need to have some really good hardware to be able to run both optic detection and optic tracking. But sometimes you don't really need like full real time applications or maybe if you don't just need like a couple of frames per second, you can apply optic trackers on top of it. Um, so it really depends on your applications and projects. And we're actually like going to test out different kind of like situations and scenarios here on the channel for different projects. And also like benchmark these different kind of like optic trackers and optic detection models together and also separately. So right now we're also going to import CV2 because we're going to use that to actually like open up our webcam. So first of all, we just have our capture index. We don't really need that. So here we're just going to set up our detector. So our detector here will be equal to AS1. And then here we can see that we get this suggestion from um, GitHub Copilot. Let's just take that and verify that we actually have the correct thing. We have this YOLO v7 PyTorch. We can also choose like YOLO v6, 5, um, and 8. They also have this new YOLO NAS model. And then we can also set if you want to use CUDA. So if you have CUDA available on your computer, you can also use that. You can also do the exact same thing here in Google Colab. They have tutorials about that in the GitHub repository. So here we can see that this is actually like the correct way to set up this framework. So here we're just going to go to the end and go to the next line. And so now we actually like have our optic detector up and running. You can just see how easy it is to set up these optic detectors. Like there's no excuses of creating applications around optic detection, optic tracking now when we have this really cool framework from AS1. So definitely shout out to Augmented Startups. Check them out and also start a GitHub repository for this. A really cool library. So now we have our detector. Now we can set up like if you want to fill the classes, we can also set that up. So here we have fill the classes. We can just set that equal to car. In this example here, I'm going to run it on a live webcam. So let's set it to person. So again, this is this is basically just the classes from the Cocoa dataset when we're using these pre-trained models. I'm also going to create videos where we're going to do custom optic texting. And then I'm also going to show you how we can set it up with AS1 and run inference with our own custom trained YOLO model. So now we're going to fill the classes. We can open up a capture here. So we have cap um, equal to video capture. We're just going to take the serif index depending on how many cameras you have on a computer. If you just have a single one, you can just specify zero here and then it is going to open up your camera. So now we have that, we can just go down and have a while true, or we can basically just have as long as our capture is open. So we're just going to set that up as in all of the videos here on the channel where we're using OpenCV with a live camera. So while the capture is open, we're basically just going to have our webcam. We can see we get this auto suggestion from GitHub Copilot. Let's just like verify that. We're just going to accept it. And let's just verify that it acts like does the correct thing. 
So here, like if return, I don't really need like all these indentations. So if return, so here I prefer to have like if not return. So if not return, we're basically just going to break out of the while loop. So if we're not able to read in all the frames, and again, we don't really need that because we actually like, have as long as the webcam is open up here, um, our while loop is running. If it's not open anymore, it will basically just like terminate our program. So now we also have our detections. We can just directly ca call our detections. So let's just verify it does the correct thing. Um, so yeah, we pass in the frame to our detect method and also the filter classes that we want to filter out. Again, if you don't specify anything, it will basically just like get all the classes from the Coco dataset and detect everything in your frame. So we have the detections here. We can also get the image information as well. So we have im info. So just in case you want to use that as well. Um, then we can extract all the bounding boxes. I'm going to show you how to do that because we want to extract the information from our detections so we can use them in our own applications and projects. So here we have bounding box. We have the x, y, x, y. Um, here we're going to set it equal to our detections. So detections, and then we're going to take like the, um, the four values here. So we're going to take all the values from our detections. So basically we take all our detections and then we take the first four values, which is the x, y, x, y. So the top left corner and the bottom right corner of our bounding box. So we also have our scores here or our, or, or our confidence scores. Um, so let's just call them conf scores. And then again, it is basically just like the fourth index here in the second axis for our detections. So again, the four first values are the x, y, x, y bounding box coordinates, then we have the confidence scores, and then the last one here is our class IDs. So that will be the fifth fifth column here, or like the fifth index. So now we have basically extracted all our information. We have the bounding boxes, confidence scores, and also the class IDs for all the corresponding bounding boxes and confidence scores. We have our frame here. We can have this utils here. So inside the utils library here from AS1 as well, we have this drawer detections. We can basically just pass it in, we pass in the frame. We can also pass in detections directly, or we can go in and pass in the bounding boxes, the class IDs and the confidence scores and so on individually. So let's just do that. So here we have the X, Y, X, Y. So let's just copy it up here. X, Y, X, Y. I actually think we got a confidence score here or like an auto suggestion. So let's just use that. I don't really care about like the confidence scores. I just want like the class IDs. So let's just pass that in and end it off. So now we should be able to have everything. I actually need to specify that this is the class IDs that we want to use uh, because this is not the third argument. So the class IDs here are equal to the class IDs. And then you can also specify all the other information if you want to do that. Then we have imshow here. We're basically just showing the frame that we're drawing the detections on. And here, if we hit Q on a keyboard, we'll break out of the while loop. And if we break out of the while loop, we will basically just destroy all our windows and we will also release our webcam. So here we call cap.release. And now we should act like have everything set up here. Again, this is really easy to set up. We just have to like import AS1, set up the detector here, specify what type of model we want to use. We can also specify the tracker in here. I'm going to cover that in another video, go, go into more details with that. And then we're going to see the results. If you want to fill some classes from our pre-trained models, we can also do that. Or if you do using like your own custom models, we, we set up a video capture with our webcam. We have a while loop running as long as the webcam is open. We're going to read in a frame from our webcam, pass that frame through our optic detection model. We get the detections out, extract all the information, and then we basically just draw that information on top of our frame, visualize it, and then we're basically just repeating that as long as the webcam is open and we don't hit Q on our keyboard. So again, here we're just drawing all the detections. You can also like extract this information, store it into CSV files or do whatever you want to do it. Okay, so now we have everything. Let's now go up and act like just open a terminal and run this application or like run this Python script here so we can see the results. First of all, we need to activate our environments as we did when we installed this AS1 library. So if you're not familiar with that, definitely go in and check that video of how we can clone the repository and also set up the environment here so we can use it for optic detection and optic tracking. So now when we have that, we can basically just go in and run this AS1 live webcam. So here we're just going to type Python and then we have Python AS1, um, AS1 here. So I'm just going to type it out fully. We have live web webcam and then here we have .py. So now we can actually just run it and see the results with our live webcam. Okay, so I basically just figured out that we don't have to like have this drawer detections. We actually just need to pass in like drawer uh, bounding boxes or like drawer uh, boxes. 
I'm just going to type that instead. And then we should be able to go down here and run the program. It will open up our webcam here. So I'll just take it up here. And then we're basically just going to take persons in the frame and we're going to see how fast it can run. We can also play around with uh, with the capture settings in just a second. So right now it's just opening it up at 640 by 480 as default. First of all, it's just setting it up here and then we should be able to run on the live webcam in just a second. It should come down here at the bottom. So here we can see we're detecting a person. It runs fairly nice. We can even see that it takes me over here on my recording screen. So a person, it also detects my arm. So again, we can see that it act, it's actually like a pretty nice detection. This is the YOLO V7 model. It is running like fairly fast as well. So we're only detecting persons in the frame. So if we're just moving the camera around, like we're only detecting, detecting persons in the frame because we're filtering those detections. If we don't specify that, we should be able to just like detect all the persons that we have in the frame. So let's just start to do that. Um, first of all, we're just going to change the capture settings here so we can actually like run with um, HD instead. So 1280. And then we're going to set 720. So this is basically just HD, so not full HD, but we can also run that if your webcam supports that. We're going to save it and we're going to run it again to see the results. So now we're not filling the classes. We should be able to actually like just detect any objects from the Cobra data set in our webcam. So here we're opening up. We can see that we're now we're detecting like all all the different kind of like um, all the different kind of like objects from the Cobra data set. We both have a laptop, we have a mouse. Um, we also have a mouse here. We have some false detections as you can see here. We should maybe like draw the confidence score as well and also filter out the results. We have the TV. If we take it over here to the background, we have a chair. Uh, we have a person detected at the bottom. We also have this potted plant in the background here. We don't really have any detections, but like if I'm turning around here again to myself, Again, we're detecting a person. Sometimes we get some false predictions. We can filter those out. We have the chair here in the background, even though we can even see like the, the like the armrest of the chair. So these are some pretty nice models. Again, we can just apply optic trackers and optic detectors on top of that as well. So it's really cool. We're going to create some really nice applications and projects around it. We're going to use this framework here a lot more in the future because it's just easy to work with. We can change the models. We can do some benchmarks, comparisons, and all those different things. So thank you guys for watching this video here. I hope you can use this for some really cool applications on your own, if it's personal projects, or if you're creating some cool applications where you want to do optic detection and also optic tracking you just saw in this video here how easy it is to set up it took like around like maybe like you can probably set it up in five minutes um, if you're doing your best you have to import the modules open up a video capture specify the model choose what type of model we can also set on optic tracker fairly easy as we're going to see in the upcoming videos and then you just load in images from your webcam or a video file or even just images take the detections, extract the results, and then you can do whatever you want to do with the results. So thank you for asking watching this video here. And again, remember to subscribe button and bell notification under the video. Also like this video here if you like the content and you want more in the future. I actually have some courses with the Yolvi 8 and also the Yolvi 7 model. If you're interested in that, you can go check it, check it out. For the Yolvi 8 model, we also talk about the optic tracking algorithms, how they work under the hood, the theoretical stuff about these um, optic trackers, what's going on behind the hood, how we can implement them in our own Python script. It is actually like based on the Kalman filters, which we're going to cover in this course as well. So it's actually like a pretty nice course if you want to take it more to the theoretical level, learn how these optic detectors and optic trackers act like implemented under the hood, and then we can use them in our applications and projects. And we also know how to fine tune the parameters much better. So I'll just hope to see you in one of the upcoming videos, guys. Bye for now.